Hi and welcome to Swiss Coast Daily Market Talk. It is Monday, October 7th. The new week starts with dashed hopes of seeing the Federal Reserve cut its interest rates by another 50 basis points next month because simply because the US jobs data released last Friday was surprisingly strong. So the US yields jumped and the US dollar rallied across the board to clear a quite important technical resistance level. So this week, all eyes are on the latest CPI update from the US and well, it better be soft enough. Surprise, surprise, the US jobs market is not collapsing, guys. On the contrary, the US economy added more than 250,000 new non-farm jobs last month. The unemployment rate in the US fell to 4.1% level, and wages in the US grew faster than expected by analysts, both on monthly and on a yearly basis. On a yearly basis, the US workers earned 4% more on average compared to a year ago. So that's not bad at all. On top, the strikes at the US ports were paused until mid-January, and the goods are finally being moved until further notice. Now, the market's reaction was mixed to the latest news and data, depending on the asset class. The U.S. Treasuries, for example, got heavily sold off. The U.S. two-year yield jumped 25 basis points on Friday as it became clearer that the Federal Reserve's decision to cut its interest rates by 50 basis points last month was probably a mistake. And the U.S. 10-year yield rose about 12 basis points on Friday. The probability of another 50 basis point cut from the Fed in the November monetary policy meeting crashed to zero, simply zero percent. And activity on Fed funds futures now gives close to 100 percent chance for a 25 basis point cut in November and a meager 2 percent chance for no rate cut at all. So voila, in just about a week time we went from maybe another 50 basis point cut from the Fed to a certain 25 basis point cut and maybe nothing. So the US dollar index jumped more than 2.5% last week and is drilling above the 102 and 50 level. Today, the major 38.2% Fibonacci retracement on June to September decline. So a decisive move above this Fibonacci level should send the index into the medium term bullish consolidation zone and paved the way for a further recovery of the US dollar index, which lost more than 6.5% since last October, on the back of dovish Federal Reserve expectations, and that, that even though the Fed actually began cutting its own interest rates after its major peers began cutting theirs, like the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, and the Swiss National Bank, for example. As such, the euro dollar will slip below the 110 psychological support last Friday after the jobs data and it fell below the 109.80 level which is the major 38.2% Fibonacci retracement which actually distinguishes between the summer's positive trend and a medium term bearish reversal. And beyond the technical signal that we get from the Fibonacci retracement that autumn is coming for the euro dollar, the fundamentals here are also well, quite supportive of a softer euro. Because the European economies are not doing strongly these days. The latest PMI numbers from the eurozone countries show further weakness in activity recently. Inflation in the eurozone is below the ECB's 2% policy target, so there is not much reason for the European Central Bank to, well, stay cautious, to be honest with you. Therefore, a further weakness in the euro dollar would actually make sense from the actual level. So the next bearish target stand at 109.30 level, which is the 100-day moving average, and the 108.75 level, which is the 200-day moving average. Across the channel, the pound sterling got heavily hit last week, remember? As the BOE governor, Mr. Andrew Bailey, said that the bank could get a bit more aggressive in cutting its interest rate. So that was a very, very unusually dovish speech from Bailey, who on the contrary remained very, very cautious about revival in inflation over the past year. So 
Hearing Mr. Bailey talk about aggressive monetary policy action sent cable to 130.70 level last week, but the pair found support near its 50-day moving average, that's near 130.80 level, and hasn't yet got a chance to test the major 38.2% Fibonacci support to the downside, and that support stands just a few pips below the 130 psychological mark, where we will probably see some solid support. Elsewhere, the Kiwi dollar starts the new week under a decent selling pressure as the Reserve Bank of New Zealand is expected to cut its interest rates by 50 basis points this week when it meets. And the dollar yen rallied past the 148 level and has stepped into the medium term bullish consolidation zone on the back of his new PM's rejection of the idea of another interest rate hike in Japan this year and also on the back of a broad base rally in the US dollar. So the dollar yen will likely consolidate gains between the 148 to 150 range until further notice. And well, looking elsewhere, even the Swiss franc lost some field last week against the greenback. The dollar franc rose above its 50-day moving average as the Swiss National Bank's new governor, Mr. Martin Schlegel, well, he said that the Swiss National Bank will be prepared to intervene in the FX markets to manage the franc's value if necessary. In plain English, he simply meant don't rush to my friend, guys, because I can suddenly decide well to sell them myself to make sure that well the franc doesn't get too strong in the future because well it's a whole different problem to have I reckon but it's a problem still because well a too strong Swiss franc is obviously not good for the Swiss exports that are already very very expensive for elsewhere and has a damaging impact on the Swiss economy that the Swiss National Bank doesn't want especially when inflation looks under control but anyway the US dollar is better bit at the start of this week but the inflation reports from the US due this Thursday could actually brush off some of that bullishness the US headline inflation is actually expected to have further ease from two and a half percent to 2.3% in September, but core inflation is still above the 3% mark. So figures in line with expectations this week, or well, ideally softer than expected, will keep the Federal Reserve those in charge of this market, even though another 50 basis point cut from the Fed this November looks far-fetched at this point. But the risk is actually to see a stronger than expected figure land on the market this week because if that's the case, well, the idea that the Federal Reserve may have made a mistake by cutting its interest rates by 50 basis points last month would well, gain momentum and that would be bad quite bad for risk appetite. But for now, don't worry because stock investors aren't much concerned about all that. Well, Friday's stronger than expected jobs figures from the US, well sure, dashed the expectation of another jumbo rate cut from the Federal Reserve when it meets in November, but confirmed that the economic tissue in the US remains was strong enough to add a good number of jobs last month. As such, the S&P 500 closed last week on a positive note. And actually, all news are good news for the S&P 500 stocks these days. Because the good economic data means that the US economy is doing well enough and that's good for profit expectations. And well, bad economic data suggests that the Federal Reserve will loosen its monetary policy and that also gives support to valuations. I mean, look, the third quarter earnings estimates for the S&P 500 stocks have fallen from 7.9% growth estimated in July to 4.7%. The S&P 500 was weak during a part of the summer, remember, but the index actually has recovered since then and is now even up by 2% compared to the July peak. So the earnings season will kick off this Friday with big US bank earnings. And the good news is that well, lower expectations are easier to beat. So this is all for this Monday. I'm Ipegos Kardeshka and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. 
Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading. Thank you.